heard how floating wind farms are the new cool kids on the block when it comes to renewable energy. And I've come to Lisbon to find out about a new exciting milestone on that journey. One of the key aims of floating wind platforms is to reach deeper waters with higher winds. The Windflow project kicked off back in 2011 and features the largest turbines ever to be installed on floating platforms. Kean Conroy is from Principal Power. This place is incredible. It's impressive, isn't it? The scale of the place is just enormous. It's vast, yeah. it's so big. Yeah. Kean, where are we and what is going on here? We're here in Lisnav in the, the west of Portugal looking at two of the Principal Power's Windflow foundations. Uh, these are the first of their kind semi-submersible floating platforms for offshore wind turbines. Semi-submersible platforms, tell me what those That's are. quite a mouthful. Um, yeah, so these are floating platforms for turbines. So where we've seen offshore wind turbines installed to date, they've always been piled into the seabed, like Arclo Bank in, in off the coast of Wicklow. What we've done here is we've taken the technologies in the oil and gas sector and adapted them and kind of refined that and scaled it down to support the next generation of floating turbines. So what we have here is basically two miniaturized oil platforms. Each column itself is about 30 metres high. So on the column nearest me, you'll see that, that'll be the column where the turbine itself is installed, and that'll then power the platform. These platforms can be deployed between depths of 50 metres and up to around 1,000 metres, making them ideal for many sea territories across the world. So essentially you can go anywhere with these? Pretty much. So on the surface it looks like three yellow cylinders and a few cables in between, but it's probably a bit more sophisticated than There's that. There's quite a lot going on in the background there and inside. You'll see the smaller column coming down horizontal there to the main column. That's how we get the electricity back to shore. So we start to have floating electrical cables, daisy chain from one to the next to the next. These are very complex cables. They run about 66 kV with a little fiber optic core in the middle of them. That enables us to, to monitor what the turbine is doing, to monitor what the platform is doing, and ultimately to get the electricity back to the shore. That in itself, in the control element, is, is again another unique feature of the wind float. It's about maximizing production in all the weather states. So we were able to control that as it needs. As the sea conditions change, the, the platform itself is, is able to respond. Just talk to me about how they work, because when you think of a turbine, it's huge, it's heavy. How can it float in the sea? It takes the technology from the oil and gas sector, basically uh, ballast using ballast tanks in internally and uh, water entrapment plates, which holds the weight of the water and, uh, beneath the turbine. And that holds the platform stable, but with a couple of additions of the, the water plates underneath the platform. Yeah, because you're sending it out into the Atlantic. It's not the most hospitable of environments. No, this isn't our first endeavour in the Atlantic. Our first project we installed in 2011. That was a demonstration project which ran from 2011 to 2016. And during that period, the turbine sustained waves of over 17 metres coming over the bow. Uh, it generated in waves of up to 12 metre swells. So yeah, it's pretty impressive and pretty daunting. This multinational project is a significant feat of technology, design and engineering. And Joao Mendonça Santos is the fabrication manager. It is the very first floating offshore wind farm in, in Europe. It's going to feature the biggest turbine ever installed on a floating uh, platform. There's a lot of firsts, so it's really, really exciting. Each column height is about 30 meters. That's like a 10-story building. The blades are about 80 meters long. That's like nine double-decker London buses uh, long. Uh, so all the, all the way bottom to the tip of, of these blades, uh, roughly 217 meters. That's just 10 meters off the Golden Gate Bridge in San Francisco. Wow. So it's huge. It is big, yes. And you're the man who goes and checks every single weld, every single cable, every single plug. Well, not just me, but a team of people, yes. We are in charge of following just from the very start, from uh, basically bringing things from paper to what you see today, indeed. This site in Portugal is the setting for a hugely important phase of this expensive and complex project. These impressive platforms are constructed in a dry dock, which is then flooded so the platforms can be towed to a site in northern Spain, where all three turbines will be fully assembled, before ultimately being deployed at the offshore site just north of Porto. And that's going to be an awesome site, seeing three London eyes essentially being towed off into the Atlantic. Yes, they'll, they'll be quite a sight indeed. I'd yeah. say you might have a tear in your eye that day. <laughs> And what happens if something breaks? 
That's kind of the unique thing. We, we operate it as you would a normal turbine. The technicians maintain it on a day-to-day -day basis, but where we need to do something unique, we deploy small tugboats. 75 tonne tugboats are not exactly that small. Yeah, it's uh, all quite on quite a big scale. scale. And then the platform itself is towed back to shore where the, maintain where the maintenance is undertaken in a safe and controlled environment. Ah, uh, so you just bring it ashore, fix it all up and send it back, and as opposed back to out. bringing all this specialist uh, expensive equipment out to fix it. Exactly. What kind of output are you getting out of these? Each turbine and power output about 8.3 megawatts. So in total, that's 25 megawatts. In a context of Ireland, we have the Arclow Bank Wind Farm, which is seven platforms, similar power outputs. So we've gone from the point of having seven turbines installed to three. And how much does 25 megawatts power in terms of homes? The figure we use here in Portugal for these platforms, about 60,000 people will get their power from these three turbines, which is, and this is just the start. This is a, what we call a, a pre-commercial array. The next step now is really to kind of ramp that up of an order of tens and, and, and beyond. So where does Ireland fit into all of this? What we see in Ireland is two very different environments. We have the Irish Sea on the east coast, relatively sh shallow waters, and then we have the rest of our coasts, which go from relatively shallow to very deep very quickly. And we'll never be able to capitalize on that resource without the advent of floating turbines. So we'll see fixed off the coast of Dublin and up and down the east coast, but then we go forward, we'll start to see these deployed off the coast of Waterford, Cork, Galway, and up, up as far as Donegal. That's where the real potential for these structures is. So hopefully in the next decade or so, when I plug in my kettle, I'll be getting powered by something like this. That's the hope, yes. I think in the very near future. There's a recognition that we have the resource and now it's just all about exploiting it. The sky's the limit, or the sea's the, the limit. The sea's the limit, that's a good way of saying it. <laughs> <laughs>